I love the Big Bang. There's no study of process, no biology, no chemistry, no geology, anywhere in Genesis. So if anybody tells you that the Bible contradicts science, they're really con confused. Because there's no science in the Bible to contradict. This guy tries to debunk God. So make sure to watch that at the end because I have a special video to show you guys at the end here. Yes, sir. How do you feel about Genesis, the Big Bang, and evolution? I love the Big Bang. The Big Bang essentially says the universe is not eternal. There was a point in time approximately 15 billion years ago, when there was a major explosion. And that is the start of the universe. The universe is about 15 billion years old. The reason I love that is because that is solid evidence for God. Why? It's real simple. Everything that has a beginning has a cause. Second point, the universe has a beginning. Third point, therefore the universe has a cause. Well, what about what about some like the laws of physics that say energy can either be created nor destroyed? And the closed universe theory that says it blows up, it expands to a certain point, and then it closes again and just does that forever. And it's been doing it forever and always will. There's no evidence to support that. There's no evidence to support either way. Oh, yes, there is. Well, I mean, Stephen Hawkins has written books saying that it could go either way. There's no certain way to know that it starts once and goes forever or if it does it continuously forever. Yeah, Stephen Hawking has written books about imaginary numbers. Yeah, Stephen Hawking has written a lot of stuff. World. Just because Stephen Hawking theorizes about something doesn't make it true. Stephen Hawking aside, the scientific community is convinced that at this point, the evidence points to a Big Bang. At this point, the evidence is the universe has a beginning, the Big Bang. Arno Penzias, back in the 60s, discovered background noise, got a Nobel Prize for it. The background noise in the universe communicates very clearly there was a Big Bang. This universe is not eternal, there is a beginning. Now, maybe more evidence will be shown to change that, but at this point, the evidence is it was a Big Bang 15 billion years ago. The idea of oscillating universes, there is nothing to support that. And I know a lot of Christians got super scared at the idea of a Big Bang. I mean, obviously it's because maybe the conclusion of these scientists were that it happened from nothing. Um, how about it happened from God? God started it. Wouldn't you think this would be this great, ginormous bang of creation? Just thinking about even the process of life itself. This person I am just didn't happen out of nowhere. I feel like when God speaks, speaks things into existence, it's a slow process. I had to be born. I had to come out of my mother's womb and grow. And over time, after 26 years, that's how old I am. Yeah, I know it's a shock. I'm here today. And the Big Bang supports that God created the universe. No evidence. Now, maybe we'll come up someday with evidence for it. But today, there is no evidence for an oscillating universe. It's a total theory. Well, what about energy can either be created or destroyed? I mean, that idea in itself is saying that the things that exist always will exist. I mean, if I drink this water, it's not in the bottle anymore. It goes into me, and then when I go to sweat, it goes into the atmosphere, and that, you know, it does nothing that is ever created or destroyed. You burn a log, it's not like the log disappears and goes different places. So, I mean, everything that's been here has always been here and always will be. No. Everything has not always been here. The Big Bang shows that. That's why I'm so excited about the Big Bang. The Big Bang theory clearly states Everything has not always been here. There was a beginning. Before the Big Bang, there was nothing. I love it. Because you know very well that there's only one thing that comes from nothing. And that is nothing. You never get something coming from nothing. So the Big Bang pushes people to acknowledge, gosh, there's got to be some type of immaterial non-physical creator who makes this happen. And that's why many scientists are turning from atheism to theism, because of the Big Bang.
That's why I told you I love the Big Bang. I mean, I feel like I feel like the fact that everything has been here and always been here is actually more support for God than the fact that it just came out of nowhere. Well, sir, fine, but let's not put our heads in the sand. The scientific evidence is that at this point is everything has not always been here. Scientific evidence at this point is about 15 billion years ago, there was nothing, and then there was a tremendous big bang, and that began the universe. I mean, the argument really is, is that everything was at an infinitely small point. All the matter in the universe was at one single point, and something triggered that. It's not that it just came out of nowhere. It's a belief that there at one time was an infinitely small collection of everything that's around us in the universe. And for some reason, there was an expansion, and that's what the Big Bang was. I mean, you're, no, you're not going to find any physicist to tell you that just all this stuff that is around here was never here, and then it just came out of nowhere. And that's how black holes work. It's an infinitely small, dense mass. I mean, I don't think I'm really arguing with the existence of God. I'm just arguing, like, where is God's place in, in this? Because, I mean, what you're saying right now is, like, other people's opinions. And opinions have been changing for years. I mean, Columbus thought the world was flat. And the next day, we're traveling to the moon. And, I mean, how, how can we say that everything's so definite? Yeah, and all the things that we've been learning doesn't disprove God. It actually brings more evidence for God. The, the code within our DNA just proves that there was a creator. The fact, the fact that after all of this was created, we are perfectly, like our Earth planet, is perfectly in the exact place that it needs to be for us not to burn up or not to freeze to death. Literally, don't you think that's a designer? That wouldn't happen out of nowhere. Ask me a very personal question. You asked me, Cliff, what do you think about the Big Bang? I responded, I love the Big Bang. And then I explained why. Isn't that what you asked me? Yeah, but I mean, I just feel like it's a healthy debate, it's something to talk about, because this is relevant to religion. Religion has changed over the years. I mean, you look at like the Catholic Church. I mean, it's always had to take stances when Copernicus first discovered that there were other planets. I mean, the church had to realize that some things weren't the way that they originally thought they were. That's right. And so it adapts. But I'm trying to find where God, God's place is in modern science. I mean, I just find it really hard to believe in like the God of the Old Testament especially in a world where like science is now beginning to explain some of the most complex things in the universe. Well, how does science contradict the Bible? Well, I mean, first of all, I mean, Genesis, if taken literally, obviously conflicts with science. Really? How? Because it says that God, if you really want to say literally, I mean, God basically created us out of dirt. I mean, evolution, technically, like we're created out of stardust, right? But I mean, in the way it animates it, it's, it, it would be impossible for anyone to know how civilization was created. It's impossible. Sir, Genesis chapter 1 is poetry. How do you literally interpret a poem? I mean, how, how, how is it arguably a poem? There are thousands of people across this country and millions across the world that believe it literally. So what? I mean, I'm just saying, where does God fit in their, their lives? So it's easier to Sir, all you got to do is, you got to respect literary yeah. style. And Genesis chapter 1 is Hebrew poetry. So if you're going to interpret a poem and demand that it means six 24-hour periods, I think you're making a mistake. Genesis 1 is not concerned with the question, how long did God take to create? It's not answering that question. Well, technically it is. It says it took seven days, seven nights. Sir, sure, there's no problem with Genesis and science. Why? Because there's no science in Genesis. Science is a study of process, how things happen. There's no study of process, no biology, no chemistry, no geology, anywhere in Genesis. So if anybody tells you that the Bible contradicts science, they're really con confused. Because there's no science in the Bible to contradict. Whether you believe in six-day creationist or you believe that it's millions of years old, the most important thing is that you believe that Jesus died on the cross and rose again in three days. That's the most important thing. And yes, obviously, Genesis was written in poetry form. And when, when we read poetry, it's not always meant to be read literally. It's a study of process. How does the mechanism work? There's no chemistry, no geology, no biology, no physics, 
anywhere in the Bible. Then why has there been so much conflict throughout history between church and science? It's real they, simple. I'll tell were, you why. You were, want the answer to that one? Sure. Because Christians have added to the Bible. Christians have added their own scientific view to the Bible, and then they've said, science contradicts the Bible. That's exactly what happened to Galileo. Galileo didn't contradict the Bible. He contradicted the Aristotelian scientists, who taught that the Earth was the center of the solar system. He did better science than they did. And then those rascal, tricky Aristotelian scientists went running to the church. And they said, guess what, church? There's a heretic running around out there. His name's Galileo. He contradicts the Bible. He says it's not the Earth that's the center of the solar system. He says it's the sun. And the church made the horrible mistake of siding with the Aristotelian scientists. The Bible never says that the Earth is the center of the solar system. But they added that to the Bible, persecuted Galileo. But Galileo made a tremendous statement. Galileo said, the Bible tells us how to get to God, not how the universe goes. Yeah, I agree with you. I mean, I guess definitely agree that man has added things, but I mean, the reason I can't attend church is because I don't know where the division is and what, what's real and what's not, like you just said, because the church has so much power. They could, I mean, if you go to a sermon, you listen to someone else's interpret interpretation of scripture, just like people have been doing for thousands of years. I mean, I mean, just like you said, like, so they go and this, this, this other astronomer who sides with the church, and then it becomes belief by that organization, by the church. And so, I mean, even today, like, where is that division now? A great point. Find a church where the Bible is taught, not where Republican philosophy or Democratic philosophy or a particular form of science is taught. Go to a group with a group of believers who are serious about following Christ and growing in Him. Because you need that. I need Him. Christ taught that we need each other. We can't just be islands unto ourselves. But obviously the most important thing is having a relationship with Jesus, knowing that He died on the cross for our sins. Yes, we can have different views and different opinions on different theology, but having the core values of Christianity is what brings us together like obviously that Jesus is God's son there's the Holy Spirit Jesus died on the cross for our sins so that we can be saved we're all sinners we've all fallen short that's why we need Jesus to save us and only Jesus can save us through faith through grace by what he did for us on the cross let's continue I would not go to the majority of churches because they mishandle the scriptures that doesn't mean they all do and I've been invited here by some wonderful groups of Christians who I am convinced handle the scriptures very, very well. Reformed University Fellowship, InterVarsity Christian Fellowship, Every Nation Fellowship, King's Way Fellowship. These are humble people who love Christ and are seeking to get to know him better. One standing right there on your right. <laughs> Meet Raymond. <laughs> And now I want to play a video from Young Sheldon. I think will go beautifully with what we were talking about. Did you know that if gravity were slightly more powerful, the universe would collapse into a ball? I did not. Also, if gravity were slightly less powerful, the universe would fly apart and there'd be no stars or planets. Where are you going with this, Sheldon? It's just that gravity is precisely as strong as it needs to be. And if the ratio of the electromagnetic force to the strong force wasn't 1%, life wouldn't exist. What are the odds that would happen all by itself? Why are you trying to convince me to believe in God? You don't believe in God. I don't, but the precision of the universe at least makes it logical to conclude there's a creator. That's so good. Well, anyway, guys, I encourage you to go to Jesus today. Know that he loves you. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. We hit 10,000 subscribers over the weekend, so thank you all for your love and support. It means the world. We hit our goal way before the end of the year, so a shout out to you guys. Love and appreciate you all. And guys, um, if you want to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior and make him uh, first in your life, you can do that today. I have a questionnaire down below that you can fill out. It can help you understand exactly how to do that. And guys, you might like this video here. Peace.